after a recess to conclude the afternoon's business. Um, let's go to the CEO's report. I believe we have a written report in front of us, you and do. the CEO can comment. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. You have my CEO report. Um, we talk about, uh, let's see, we've got a, we, we talk a little bit about the state budget and, and uh, we know there's 23 days remaining until the start of the new fiscal year. Clearly we're all anxiously waiting to hear something about VLF, which uh, we're not hearing anything today, maybe later in the week. Um, just to remind the board and the public, we do have our final budget hearing September 13th through the 15th. And the space report, we'll be back with the phase two of the space report uh, later this month. And we've had a, a couple ad hoc committees. I'll leave that up to the board members to discuss. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. On the, on the back page, you'll see the ledge report. And we certainly have had a lot of legislative activity over the past month or so. There's been a lot of letters that have gone out from the board. And then, of course, we have some meeting highlights. Um, and I think that's about it. Attached, you have just the, the CSAC budget bulletin. And then also, I did attach the letter that came from probation regarding the um, Community Corrections Partnership uh, regarding SB 678 and for the uh, chief probation officer to form a committee and to talk about the allocation and how we're going to move forward. So you have that information attached and then also the extension of the comment period for Harris Quarry. So uh, that is my report today. And I would like to comment that while there is no ledge report today, Madam Chair, the board did receive a supplemental legislative report uh, from my office. And basically, uh, this is uh, just at a glance, some of the actions that we've taken in this office, and then also a report uh, from CSAC and from the ledge conference. And I believe that we will be getting to this next week. Thank you. Uh -huh. Let's go to supervisor's reports. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Supervisor McCallum. Yes. Uh, before getting to reports, sure. I do have a, I guess, a concern to state with regard to the space report, which is uh, slipping down the agenda. You know that part one came forward in April. We were supposed to hear part two in 30 days. Now maybe we're going to hear it in June. And uh, I just don't want us to, to let that one slip. You know, we really need to move forward as quickly as we can. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Supervisor Pinches. A couple quick things, Madam Chair, thank you. First of all, the Willis City Council the other night uh, renamed the Commercial Street Seabiscuit Parkway. I think that's going to be a real step up to our museum facility down there. I think it's going to give a, kind of a national, inter international recognition to and, and kind of point it in the direction of the museum. So it certainly, I don't know to what degree it's going to help our museum, but it certainly is not going to hurt. Uh, another thing, we had a, a public comment here a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, I believe, come in and talking about the realignment uh, of Richardson Grove of the Caltrans project up there. And there's been a lot of misinformation, but I'm basically telling this to the public. This is, I got a memo from Ruth Venezuela of, uh, of uh, our Senator Chesbrough, Assembly Member Chesbrough's office. There's actually two redwood trees within Richardson Grove that's going to be removed. One is six inches in diameter and the other is seven inches in diameter. So it's a far cry what the person coming to this and said there was six, he heard there were 600 trees going to remove. That's the only redwood trees within the park that's going to be removed, the six and the seven inch diameter redwood trees. So that project, I think it's, uh, the environmental consequences are way overblown to what, what they're attempting to do. So I just wanted to bring that out. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, Supervisor McCallum. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> well, I'll express a contrary view on Richardson Grove. It's true that the number of redwoods removed is small, and they are small trees. But <clears throat> there is a real concern that the road widening is going to create significant damage to the root systems of the older, more mature trees, because you start paving over their root systems, and they have shallow root systems. Uh, that can't be beneficial. I think there's also a concern that by uh, widening the uh, width of the road 
and by speeding up the traffic as you go through there, it'll dramatically change <clears throat> the atmosphere of going through that. <clears throat> so I understand the, the perceived uh, benefits, but there's, there's a cost to that also, and I'm, I am concerned about that. Uh, as far as reports, <clears throat> I'd just like to uh, <clears throat> note that my voice is failing. <clears throat> That may be a good thing. That'd spare everybody some uh, agony. <clears throat> the uh, city of Ukiah did obtain access to the uh, Palace Hotel under threat of court action in order to inspect it. The city is attempting to move forward to uh, reestablish the power of eminent domain so that they can force the landowner to uh, make changes or else. I think that will be a good thing. The downtown has been held hostage for uh, 20 years, basically. Uh, the broadband committee does continue to meet, and I think both ha Supervisor Hamburger and I continue to Hamburg. <laughs> it's getting late, folks. I, I think both Supervisor Hamburg and I are continue to be very impressed by the quality of uh, people that we have on that committee and their dedication and the uh, enormous amount of work that they're putting forward on that. They are very appreciative of the board action adopting the resolution. The Local Agency Formation Commission is uh, moving forward with the process of evaluating uh, contracts to do both the city of Ukiah only and the Ukiah Valley uh, municipal service reviews. Uh, surprisingly, we only got four proposals, but uh, interviews are being scheduled with the top two proposers, and hopefully we will soon have in motion a means of completing those municipal service uh, reviews. Uh, at least some of us attended Legal Services of Northern California's open house at their newly uh, remodeled uh, offices following the fire they had two years ago. Uh, they don't seem to have any problem with their budget. They're hiring additional staff, so we should probably uh, see who their contacts in Sacramento and Washington are. I'd uh, like to note that the Relay for Life, which we just passed a resolution for this morning, will be held uh, this coming Saturday, June 11th, and Sunday, June 12th. There is still the opportunity for the public to get involved with the numerous teams that are uh, participating in order to raise funds, and we do have one team available uh, in the auditor's office if anyone wants to acquire over there regarding Team Yellow Rose in order to uh, make contributions in support of the participants. Thank you. Other supervisors <coughs> for reports? Supervisor Brown. Thank you, um, Chair Smith. I went to the open house for Northern Legal Services as well. Um, and we are going to talk about CSAC, but we're going to hold that until next meeting, so I'll have a lot to say. <laughs> um, Supervisor Hamburg and I attended the CAF. Um, there were two meetings, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, and uh, it's about their survey about local food supply, marketing, distribution. Um, and I forgot to bring it with me, but I will, and make copies available to other supervisors of the handouts that they did have. And that particular effort um, was USDA funded, and it wraps into uh, the Northern, um, North Coast Regional Food Systems Network that myself and Valerie Brown are working on, and Supervisor Hamburg has joined me in that effort. So that's all. That's all. Okay. Uh, Supervisor Hamburg? <clears throat> just, just one or two things. On, um, on Thursday the 26th, uh, the Anderson Valley, um, I think they call themselves the Citizens Advisory Committee, along with the Anderson Valley Fire Department and the Ambulance Company and the Mendocino County Sheriff and CalSTAR, 
uh, put on a, uh, an amazing demonstration. I'm sure other board members have seen these where they uh, stay, it, it's called uh, every 15 minutes, and they actually stage a uh, alcohol-related car crash. And this, uh, this year, this was staged at, uh, on the airport road between the Anderson Valley Health Center and the airport. And uh, it was a kind of a stormy day, but uh, the entire Anderson Valley High School came out and um, many sitting in the rain, some, some with umbrellas, and, and then uh, about 50 or 60 members of the community were out there. And this was about an hour long enactment of a, um, of a, an accident in which you know one young person lost their life, several were injured. They, they, the enactment is incredibly realistic. The school follows up with, uh, with assemblies and, and uh, other activities that um, make this very realistic to the students. For example, the student who is uh, students who are injured then come to school the next few days, you know, with their their crutches and their casts and. You know, they really play this thing out, and it's incredibly moving, so moving that you could see people watching this with tears rolling down their cheeks. And, you know, they obviously this was an enactment, but it's a very realistic enactment. And I, anyone who hasn't uh, uh, seen one of those, I, I urge that you check it out. Um, <clears throat> one other, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh, on. Um, on Saturday was the Big River um, uh, Walk and Paddle, uh, which is an event for the Cancer Resource Center. And it was, it was just blowing down Big River like you couldn't believe. Uh, we put our tents up. They were blown away in a matter of, you know, <laughs> 10 minutes. But uh, about 100 brave souls showed up and uh, walked the uh, three or four miles up Big River. Just beautiful, beautiful walk. Actually, once you got away from the, the, you know, where the estuary is and where it comes to the ocean, the, the weather improved tremendously and it was a successful event in spite of uh, being exceptionally windy. So I know all of us support the Cancer Resource Center and, uh, and this was their annual uh, uh, coast walk. And um, I think that's, that's about it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, the chair attended uh, the dedication of the Homer Hayward Whistle Stop, and this is off the Skunk Train line. This was a, an event by Save the Redwoods League in conjunction with the Skunk Train. Great event, um, really a significant uh, component, I think, for um, preservation of uh, uh, economics in Mendocino County, that purchase and the benefits it can bring to the Willits community, it can bring to the Skunk Train, and it was a real, a really a, a fun and a very um, positive event. Um, I also attended the groundbreaking for the Simpson Lane Roundabout. This took place on May 26th, uh, as we were sort of trying to dodge raindrops um, with that sort of untimely rain. Um, uh, there was participation um, in, in addition to the partner agencies, uh, CHP was also present, and that was great to have them there. Uh, the good news on this is that it um, will go to construction shortly, and it should conclude by November. So prior to the significant um, turn into winter, if everything goes as planned, there should be a, a project conclusion. Um, and I believe we'll get a report later, maybe not today, from our DOT director about the minimal amount of county dollars. We should have a wrap-up discussion on this that needed to be expended once we know what those are on the project, far less um, because of construction costs than we anticipated. Um, I attended the Wildlife Conservation Board meeting in Sacramento. It was held concurrently, as it turns out, with the um, with the CSAC conference that we'll have a report on next week. And I'm happy to report that uh, the Eel River Peninsula project, they, uh, as they call it, in Mendocino County, this was a grant to the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation uh, for a cooperative project with Department of Fish and Game to acquire a conservation easement uh, over 8,000 acres uh, was approved unanimously by the board. Um, and that's certainly something that um, is important to the third district and really important to the county overall. And that was, there was some discussion on the item, um, not a lot. Uh, most of the projects <coughs> moved through the process really um, expeditiously and uh, we had a number of um, 
interested parties from Mendocino County present for that, and, and uh, they very much approve, uh, uh, appreciated the approval of um, WCB to move forward. The other two under consideration for Mendocino County, uh, the, the Wallala purchase, uh, which the conservation fund is involved with and also the use of redwood forest neither of those were scheduled for review at this particular meeting uh, I'm sorry they were scheduled for review they were not uh, uh, agendized for final um, uh, consideration so uh, an update was provided by um, John Donnelly the executive director of WCB and um, he was very happy to report that the appraisal review that was uh, asked for by the commission uh, had recently come forward. It is posted on the website. There's a 30-day public comment. Uh, and that was a favorable um, sort of reiteration of the, uh, the original appraisal, uh, finding no um, serious uh, concerns or issues on that. And uh, that was very good news, and that had just come forward, actually, post-publication of their agenda. So it was not in time for this meeting, but it was, as noticed, um, on the website, 30-day public comment, period. And what was requested by the executive director and agreed to by uh, the members of, um, of the commission, uh, uh, the board, uh, is to convene a special meeting for consideration of uh, the two projects and they agreed to that they said that that would be consistent with the process to date uh, and they agreed to set a meeting date sometime in early July they did not give specifics on that so um, there were again a number of concerned members in the audience on both of these projects uh, but didn't feel that there was a need to address um, the Wildlife Conservation Board um, but a good review by the executive director and we look forward to that July um, meeting. I also had the opportunity to participate in the NACO Waters of the U.S. conference call. Uh, this was held last Friday in the afternoon. Uh, a number of interested parties were involved as well as EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers. I think that there were some, consider, uh, uh, some, some considerable concerns with respect to what this process is about, and they clarified that, <coughs> excuse me, this is a guidance document, and guidance documents uh, do not give new definitions or interpretations that would in any way um, create any new legal definitions or implications, so they made that point. Um, I don't think they addressed all the concerns, but I think a number of the concerns were addressed with respect to um, the articulation of national policy. They did make the point that these documents cannot change um, national policy uh, and that they will not in any considerable fashion um, change the definitions on um, they will not significantly change the definitions on how tributaries are determined um, to have applicability to navigable waters and that that is not allowed under the guidance document. Um, they can only articulate current policy, they cannot change it. Uh, so I think it does, the document doesn't go um, as far as many people thought it would, um, but I think it was a good clarifying conversation. Um, EPA was involved, again, Army Corps of Engineers. It was coordinated by NACO staff. So I think they did a good job. Supervisor Brown. Uh, thank you, Chair Smith. Um, and I also uh, listened in. And, uh, but I do, I feel a little bit differently than you do um, because a number of the speakers were very disappointed in the response of staff, US EPA staff. And um, there was mentioned that a number of bills have been, uh, or legislation has been introduced in Congress to stop US EPA staff from moving forward on this document. And it has been in the um, creation for quite some time. Uh, Supervisor Pinches and I have discussed this, and we are considering bringing forth um, an agenda item in the next two weeks since July 1st will be the last of the comment period. But I would like a number, I'm sure you heard a number of counties weighing in, staff, um, San Diego, Central Valley, I think it was San Joaquin, um, just can't remember who all the others are. And so I, I very much want to contact CSAC to find out 
you know, if we can coordinate, comment how they're going to handle this. Do you think, it, does CSAC have positions on any of this yet? Do you know? Um, no, and actually I brought it forth at the rule caucus, um, and then it was brought further forth, uh, forth at um, the other caucuses and, and also the board of directors. But no, I do not know how they're going to weigh in, but I do want to find out. I think in terms of the this clarification, we need more clarification on this concept of a guidance document. They kept referencing that. And I know there's concerns out there about where this document will take it. And what I got from it is they're saying they're not setting any new policy by this document. They're only cl clarifying existing language. So it may be a, sem a semantics issue. I, I don't know. Well, I know they're, there are, they're adding definitions of what defines a waterway. And there was a lot, of, a lot of comment on wetlands and the concern um, of what they're proposing to further define on wetlands. So, so we'll see. Okay. Any other comments from board members? Okay, let's move forward to the next item, which would be, let's do the director's report. I imagine that's why he is here before us. <laughs> Poor Howard. <clears throat> it's a long day. Long day in the boardroom. So, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, the board, Howard DeShield, Director of Transportation. I uh, wasn't going to add anything, however, Supervisor Smith brought up Simpson Lane, and I actually reported that um, in the last director's report. The reason it's between, I said in the report, between eighty dollars and $150,000 is every construction project has a contingency balance to handle change orders and claims, and that's why we won't be sure till the project closes out. Something I did find out though yesterday, a year ago, we applied for, the county prepared to apply for, when we um, looked at our ledge program, a Transportation and Community Preservation Act grant from the federal government, Federal Highway Administration. And I've always just kept that active and I've kept it in the hopper. And um, so this is ironic. So um, I got the priority list. So there's good news and bad news. I got the priority list yesterday. Our project is ranked for the state of California, Simpson Lane, number one priority in that grant thing. But until Congress passes a new highway bill, we can't get anything out, but Simpson Lane ranked number one. It was the best project. So we may not get anything out of it, but if that came through, the county would owe nothing. Otherwise, it would be right. between 80 and 100. But if it comes 000. through and let's say that- We'll get nothing. I mean, we'll, we won't pay anything. Okay, but let's say that there, you do the project and you put, pay the county part and you pay for it, and all of a sudden we get a highway bill, say, next year was because it's still number one would, would they reimburse us i don't know i i know i have thought this if we get the full 150 and we only spend 80 my thought was to try to get mcog back some of their rsd1 funding right. that's my thought but i don't know supervisor but i thought here we were number one you know well our so. argument would we if you guys all agree it's the number one project we went ahead and did it and so reimburse us <laughs> yeah. when you can yeah okay. which is great news and yeah. Actually, uh, Mr. Schlesinger called me, our, our former lobbyist, called me with saying, gee, I think there's a great opening for the county. And we were, of course, already aware of it. And uh, that's great news. That yeah. It's a nationwide competition. But for California, right. the fact in good. that category, we that was the best part. I have nothing else to add. You have my report in writing. I, if you have I questions, have I'll. I have. You know. Supervisor Hamburg. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Howard, you've heard from me about this before. but. Um, Compton Ukiah Road, Mountain View Road, um, and also Bell Springs Road, which is in somebody else's district, so I don't really care. No. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you talk about these sites uh, proceeding after NEPA clearance. How long does NEPA clearance take? You know, uh, Caltrans team showed up today, and I yeah. couldn't be out with them because I was here today, and they'll be here tomorrow. But uh, we're hoping for the emergency opening. Uh, and I tried to explain that as the report, and I know yeah, it's um, I confusing. It. Some of the uh, sites need, and I know the one you're thinking of, the worst one on Ore Springs Road is 8.5. That's the one where the one lane is sunk. Um, 
As soon as they look at that, we'll do a emergency repair there and then we'll do a more long lasting repair that yeah. could take quite some time because as the report shows, I'm finishing the last eight sites from the 105 sites we had in the 06 storm, which was yeah. a benchmark storm, yeah. probably yeah. the worst. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. if they look at them today, we've already paid for um, some botanical studies, you know, so we're yeah. on it. So I'm hoping yeah. the weather will clear up and we'll get out and do the emergency opening work at those sites that are indicated. And then the full restoration could take, I hate to say it, years, but that's just the way the process goes. Depends yeah. on how environmentally sensitive the, yeah. the things are. But I think the emergency opening on Ore Springs will happen soon i would say by ore springs you're talking about comps to ukai ore springs i, yeah, yeah, I look at yeah, it it's yeah, the yeah, same yeah, road, same road. Yeah. but uh um I, you know i'll go out on a limb and say we'll get the emergency repair done in the lane open by uh in 30 <clears throat> days i really think we'll make that i think they'll clear it today or tomorrow yeah and again i'm concerned about this because in 06 i did a lot of emergency work with contracts of course i sort of had to there were some roads that were almost completely closed. Yeah. Um, when all was said and done with audit exceptions, the department lost a couple hundred thousand dollars yeah. Yeah. on work we did yeah. in the emergency because they said we didn't follow environmental process. So I'm very leery to make a error that disqualifies us for reimbursement. Yeah. These, are, um, these are dangerous spots. I drove Mountain View Road uh, last weekend and I'm just amazed I'm not getting a lot of complaints about it because because it it has two spots that are that are really dangerous spots you know where the road is basically gone right but that's why we restricted it to one lane and yeah. people have to yeah, stop and it's a one people lane controlled slowly, traffic situation but they, but they don't you know well <laughs> I know but they're supposed to not on that road <laughs> yeah a lot of my that. roads in my district are one lane one lane when they're good oh Johnny <laughs> your roads are great <laughs> Well, he doesn't have to worry about repaving them. <laughs> They're gravel. That's right. I think Supervisor Brown was next. Thank you, and thank you, Supervisor Hamburg. That was my exact question. How long will NEPA take? <laughs> well, it, the, 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 these emergency openings are more, um, they generally tend with just getting a lane of traffic restored and not much disturbance. These reviews that are happening today and tomorrow they may sign us off and then we'll be able to go. Okay. But Caltrans has sent a team down because they have NEPA delegation from federal highways and then there'll be a more involved process for the permanent repair. And for instance, on uh, the 8-5 uh, on Kompshukai Road, I'm looking this time at trying a tieback soldier pile wall, you know, so there'll be a more permanent repair than what we did before. But we'll just get the lane tied in for now. You so know. you get those clearances and then you can get the reimbursement. Right, right. And I'll be sure that we'll get it. Oh, you still have to spend the money and wait to get reimbursed. But what yeah. hurts is the audit exception three years later where mm -hmm. you're not going to get the money. Right. And that did happen to us in 06. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it. I, no one's perfect, but, you know. That's, I want to avoid that. I want to learn from that lesson. It was an expensive lesson. Mm -hmm. Then I also see that we're going to have um, three local companies working on Ore Springs, and each has a little segment. And um, so are they well coordinated together? Do we have some oversight as to how they work together? Because it's right there in the same stretch. Uh, we recognize that early on and they are going to coordinate how they work together. Um, they're very different types of work. Some of them are sub drains, some are soldier pile walls, some are some more of the rock basket or gabion walls and we're finishing up. In fact, one of those contractors we're reporting on is finishing work that got suspended last winter. And um, yeah, they're in all in different stages I mean you're not going to have a situation where a car has to stop at three sites we're working on that you okay. know they'll be at different points in their process okay thank you supervisor pinches is the slide working on on Leightonville Dostrius um officially it's still closed but the locals all know you can get through um <laughs> it was too wet for us to compact the final lift of gravel here i am on there someone's watching on the tv now they'll know you can get through john if you're a local you should have known that i don't the locals know yeah 
It's officially not open yet, but yeah, it's open. Okay. See, you're worried about getting a road up to two lanes in your district. I'm just worried about trying to get the road open. Your four-wheel drive. Your let's, out let's, there. let's not okay. fight over it, John. We both okay. want good roads in our district. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think that concludes you the Q and A. Thank you. Guys. Okay, boards and commissions. We have a list in front of us. I'll make a motion to adopt the slate. Second. So we have uh, a slate before us on a number of these. We have a motion by Supervisor Pinches, a second by Supervisor Cowan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, uh, passes unanimously. I believe we need to now return to uh, consent item number two. Supervisor McCallan, that would be for you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My concern is that this is uh, for audit services for the county. It's a three-year contract. Most recently, the contract was approved June 27, 2006. The summary of the request states that the same firm has performed the county's audits for many years. And uh, that gives me great concern. I think we had a similar situation with the Board of Retirement. And it's, in my belief, it is simply not a healthy practice to have the same firm year after year after year. The concern is they go through the motions, they're doing a pro forma audit. They may either not be up to date with the most current practices, they may not be taking a fresh look at things, and there are significant things that could be missed that we find out years later, much to our regret. Uh, we do need to move forward with the audit services. My recommendation would be that we approve this contract for one year and go out for an RFP and see what's out there. That is, in fact, Supervisor, what uh, the Retirement Board did. I had been focusing on these both with our investment um, managers and accounting and actuarial uh, from time to time. So it's taken a long time to sort of move forward in the, I think, the, the public process that you're referencing for those reasons, that we make sure that we're getting the, um, the attention. In fact, uh, some uh, entities have that built into either their bylaws or their operating procedures that is just required every five years, every seven years, whatever it is, to, to do just that. Supervisor Pinches, I think, and then Supervisor? Well, I think we're comparing a little bit apples to oranges here because in the retirement system, you're dealing with auditing basically in actuarials. Where in yeah. this, you're doing both. And in this, in this type of audit, it's strictly you're basically adding up real numbers. I mean, so the concern is the same. Yeah. Supervisor Brown. Well, I'd like to hear from Mr. Ware. Good idea. Okay. Mr. Ware. Thank you. Uh, Lloyd Weir, Auditor Controller's Office. Um, thanks for uh, having me comment on this. Um, there, there really is two schools of thought out there, and, and I've surveyed some of my uh, other uh, comrades in the, in the counties. and. You do have this this um, rollover of accountants um, and and trying to have fresh eyes and new looks at things. Um, and on the other side of the coin, um, there are some practices that uh, it, where it makes sense to retain the continuity and knowledge of a repeat uh, auditor um, because they know our systems and our people and our history which helps keep our costs down and our report quality high. Um, you know, we, we, we have um, a really good relationship with our auditor. Uh, he has been working with us over these last tough couple of years. And um, I really feel it's important to um, keep that, that continuity going. Um, I, I would say if I was having problems, if the costs were getting too high, you know, this would be the time to go for an RFP. Um, however, um, some of the other counties in Northern California, one I surveyed has the same uh, auditor for 14 years, and another one um, had one for even longer than that into the uh, 90s or 80s. And um, so it, it's a little bit of this and that. Um, I think 
you know, our current situation, I would, you know, in my situation in the office, going, coming up on a, a close and um, an audit, uh, I really feel um, better if we keep the same auditor for that, for this transition, especially if I'm not going to have Meredith available for that. So um, um, anyway, those are some of my thoughts. The other thing is um, they know our situation in the county and have come forward with um, a three-year contract with a 5% discount. So uh, that was the reason that, that I felt like it was a good idea to lock that in and keep our costs down for the next three years on that. So, Questions from Supervisor McCowan. Well, thank you. I was going to ask if you had any concern with uh, a one-year contract and revisiting this. I think you've just answered that with a 5% discount. I think it's also <coughs> been the policy of the board to attempt to negotiate even a 10% uh, reduction in all contracts, no matter who the vendor is. So uh, I would suggest the board could approve this action for a one-year contract with the direction that you negotiate a 5% reduction for a one-year contract, and we can come back to this issue. Supervisor Brown. Actually, I'd like to move forward on this, and um, a 5% discount um, I think is exceptional. Um, I believe Mr. Ware has just stated about Auditor Ford being gone. So I, I would like just to move this forward, get beyond it, and um, for Mr. Ware to consider Supervisor McCowan's comments as we move into future years. Thank you. Mr. Ware, I have a couple questions on this. Um, it says here, because we really don't have much to go on, we just have a barely a one-page summary. When it says it's they've provided audit services for a number of years, do you know how many years? Well, we've been under contract with them since 2006. Um, the, before that, we were with a firm called Bartlett, Brazler and Ray, and they were out of the Sacramento area, and um, they did merge with Galena. At, in 2006 basically the same firm so yeah. so they they have okay. a larger firm and, and since that time they've actually merged with two other CPAs so it's a growing firm and they have a lot of experience in county county audits so, so they're, they're trying so to grow it's referenced here that we approved we last approved this or I guess the only contract we've had with with this firm uh, was June 27th of 06 so was that a five-year contract no that was a three-year and then we had one year extension so we, how, uh, has that. the board actually been taking that action, or is it, have, we, have they been working it's without been a contract? Coming, yeah, the one-year extensions have been coming forward. Okay, so we had one three-year and then two one-year renewals? Yeah. And do you know why at this point uh, we've got a three-year in front of us? What um, happened? I think, you know, they finally found the time to, to give us a, a you know, proposal and, and, and work ahead of time. I think in the past we've been kind of up against it and um, had to get something done with really fast, so we just renewed. This audit, audit's mandated, right? Oh, yeah. 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 It's, we don't have a discretion to do it or not to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but I think it's just good to get a little <clears throat> background information. Supervisor Brown? Thank you, Chair Smith. And what I've seen through the years of nonprofits I've sat on and even in my former position, Many times they will, it's the same firm, but they will change auditors um, just to make sure that there's oversight of the own auditors that they have. And it sounds like if this um, firm is growing, they will have more of an ability to do that. Supervisor Hamburg. Yeah, um, Lloyd, could you go over those conditions again? So, so there's a, a fee this year and then 5% off in the, the next two years? Is no, that I'm, how it I'm works? sorry. There's a 5% discount for the next three years, including oh, this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So for, yeah, for each. For the three year contract. Mm, yeah, for the whole If three we go year for the three years. And uh, Supervisor McGowan said that we have a board policy that we're negotiating 10% reductions on all vendor contracts. Well, I, I wasn't. I don't know where that it's not a policy it's just it's a practice and it's practice. Formal directive. Yeah. It's a practice yeah it's directive just, yeah okay for quite some time actually okay because i that was that one was new to me okay well i'm uh, i'm good thank you thank you okay so that's it supervisor yep okay so, uh okay so do we have a motion we don't have one yet yes, we do. it's on the floor we have a motion we have a second oh, we do 
Yes. yes. Who made the motion? No. I did. That's what I thought. I thought you were just saying you wanted no, to. I didn't know it was in the form yeah. of a motion. And John Sorry. seconded. Okay. I, now I recall. <laughs> Five minutes ago. It's okay. It's late. Okay. It's stealth motion. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion after the discussion from Supervisor Brown for the recommended action motion before us. And we have a second by Supervisor Pinches. Uh, all those in favor? Oh, you want well, to speak to and, the motion? And I, w I will vote no just because of my concern that the phrase, we've been with the same auditor for many years, is a concern for me. Yeah. So I understand. I think there are two sides yeah. of the yeah. coin, so yeah. I understand that's that. Cool. I think it's a very valid point, actually. Mm -hmm. We don't always have to agree on everything. That's right. We certainly don't. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. So uh, the, the most motion passes uh, uh, four to one with Supervisor uh, McCowan dissenting. So that concludes, I believe, all of our business. Does did, anyone see anything we did not Did cover? we get a county council report? No, we did not. No, we don't council. have a report, but I do have something to say. Um, I, I just wanted to, to ask you. <laughs> Probably more than we want to hear. No, I was just going to let you know that the redistricting committee is going to hold one of their public meetings here in the oh. board chambers tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Good. This is the third public meeting that they will have had. I was hoping and you were going to say it's going to be tonight momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> and Chair Smith? Yes. Um, I appreciate that, and I'm going to go because if you'll recall, um, I told them to surprise me, and I really don't want to be that surprised. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go and see what they have to say. <laughs> Supervisor Pinches. Uh, Janine, the letter that we received, received from the National Forest Service about regarding our request for the welcome centers and whatnot, uh, you got a copy of that. You were going to report back. Is, is that something yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at it. But one thing that I did think about when we, um, after you and I talked, was you know we do have a camping ordinance. And it may be that that's something we could utilize. And so, you know, I can, just have to sit can, down and take the, the time to look you know, at it. Here, this is we're moving into we're in June. I mean, maybe it's even we was hoping to have something in place this year. But anyways, can you bring I'll do it next week back tonight? next week? Let me do that. OK, I'll have That'd something for you. I uh, neglected to report. I actually did attend the redistricting meeting on the coast. It was the first one mm -hmm. they had. It was a very interesting process. Uh, I believe it was. Um, recorded and it was uh, uh, put out or will be put out I think probably already has been on public television public access um, and I think that was very positive that it was recorded it wasn't all that well attended there were you know some members of the community there they rolled out the maps the only thing I maybe council could address this my, the sense I got from um, this process is it's is it's evolving um, day to day week to week and so the maps that are rolled out uh, tomorrow night will probably not be the same maps that were rolled out in Fort Bragg. So they're evolving the maps. They're as they evolving, go. and at the Willits meeting, there were even more changes suggested. And and I think that the committee is is doing a great job in terms of listening to the community, and uh, you know coming up with a variety of ideas. And I think they'll have you know at least something for you all to consider. And then you'll have your public meetings, and and we'll get this wrapped up by the end of the summer. I think. Okay, Supervisor? No? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, so uh, seeing uh, no other business uh, before us, the board will um, reconvene in closed session. In two minutes. Are we expected to report out? Yeah, I think we, I think so. We always do.
up and chop up and, you know. Oh, I go and start. I said this is a story that I've got to tell. Come make we cut a long story short. Tell you about a youth who wasn't too smart. In track anywhere after dark. Tell me in the name Mr. Braveheart. So brave, yes, he was so bold. Him say, I blood never run come. Anything you want, brave, I'd bring it come. Three feet chopped on, brave, I'd chop it up. Babylon, I come, brave, I could have never run. Cause brave, I'd not let me be gone. Brave,
madrecita tierra. The board is returning from closed session at uh, 5.22 on June 7th, and we'll go to County Council for a report. Yes, um, thank you, Madam Chair. This is a report out under uh, significant exposure to litigation. The board has directed staff to prepare a resolution to rescind the elimination of positions in the Sheriff's Office to be placed on the June 14th agenda. This direction is, re in, is in response to the Sheriff's declaration of a conflict with the Office of County Council and exposure to litigation, which will require the Board of Supervisors to retain outside counsel for the Sheriff. The Board will consider the elimination of the positions again in 60 days from today's date and as part of the 2011-2012 budget process. The motion was made by Supervisor Pinches, seconded by Supervisor Brown. The vote was 3-2 with um, Supervisor Smith and Hamburg dissenting. And that's all I have to report. Thank you very much. Uh, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>